Hi, I'm Tim. Join me as I discuss building and flying the Foam Park 2, a low wing version of my original Foam Park airplane. Let's get to it. In part one, I built my first foam bug. This is my first um, foam RC plane design made from sheet board. 30 inch fuselage, three layers thick of the 3 16th inch foam, the wing on top for ease of mounting, two inch squares for the fuselage. The plane flew, uh, flew great. As you can see in part two, I drew up a set of plans for the um, foam bug two, the second one. And this is cut out right here. And I simply traced over this onto the foam board, the length of the fuselage being 30 inches. Notice also that I um, have a low wing for this version. We'll see how that works out. So these are the fuselage halves right here. There's three of them. And I'll glue them together tomorrow to make the complete fuselage. Note the cutout on the plans. So that will fit the wing pretty well. We'll sand it to fit, but it will look something like that. Another minor change I made was <clears throat> the back of the stab. I, I indented the cutout so that the stab would fit in like this. And then with a the fin, which I redesigned, would fit flush on top of all that. So all the foam parts are complete. We have the um, fin, the rudder. Note that I beveled the edges of the foam just in a 45 degree angle. This way, when they're put on, they can um, the rudder can turn with the hinge line on this side. The foam has the paper removed from both sides. It's lightweight, fairly dense foam. If you're careful with the sanding block, <clears throat> you can curve the edges. Just don't sand too much. It's hard to recover it if you once you made a ding or something of that nature. But it does lend itself to some care, uh, careful sanding. For the same token, the ailerons are here, and I've made them look like this for the finished airplane. This is just one half of the, of the wing. I'll also incorporate this uh, drywall reinforcing tape that I got at Home Depot. A little bit tacky. It's a very strong mesh tape. And what the idea is, you put this on the model, and you glue it with hot glue to provide reinforcement. So what I'll do for a smoother surface is I'll put this reinforcing tape on the center uh, fuselage former so the other one is glued to the other side. It'll be a little, little bit smoother uh, finish. The other thing I plan to do is using transparent monocoat because it's lightweight and it'll look good on the white foam. I did a couple of tests of the monocoat on foam. The temperature is fine. It doesn't affect the foam at all. It sticks on well. I think it'll look good. It'll add a lot of strength to the model with the monocoat on the entire airplane. So that'll be going in. The other thing I want to emphasize is the utility of popsicle sticks. Again, you can purchase these at a craft store. They're just literally popsicle sticks. What'll happen is they make great little reinforcements. So for example, we have the stabilizer here. I plan on gluing a couple of popsicle sticks to the bottom just to make the center section a little bit stronger and more rigid. The popsicle sticks will be used for uh, dihedral braces on the wing. They'll uh, overlap them uh, to have the dihedral under the wing with hot glue. And just that little amount of um, rigid wood just works wonders for the strength of the overall uh, aircraft. Also, I realized that when I used these popsicle sticks as control horns, as I did on the foam bug one, notice to reinforce it, I put a little piece of foam here. What I intend to do on this one is just to put a little section of popsicle stick on the bottom and make sure that this uh, control horn is butt glued through the stabilizer to that bottom. I think that'll make for a very strong um, uh, uh, fit. Making good progress on the second edition of the foam bug, this time with a low wing. Uh, the wing is completed. Just for the heck of it, I added one inch span to each side, so it's a 42 inch wing span. I'll demonstrate here in a moment how to make this wing, but just Look at this, it's a standard arm and wing technique from Experimental Airlines. <clears throat> I used popsicle sticks here into slots glued to the spar just to help reinforce the center section. And then this tape is the drywall tape that I got at Home Depot. You simply put this in place, put some glue on it, and it does a very good job for holding the joint together, joint on top, 
and I put some of the tape along here because the stress will be that way on the wing. So I'm pretty satisfied with the wing. Uh, notice that I have the um, taken the paper off so we have the foam. Notice that I kept a little bit of the paper covering on the front. If you tried to pull this paper off when it's turned around, the paper sticks pretty well to the foam. Because of the bend in this foam, there's a danger of ripping off that foam, so I'm just leaving that front paper part in place, and I recommend you do that as well. Here we are with the fuselage. As you can see, I have gone from the high wing on the foam bug one to a low wing design, so that's come along well. I have a few pieces of foam on the side just to give a mounting section for the wing. I'll put in some uh, dowels to hold it down on the rubber band. Notice the fuselage is three sections of foam thick. The foam board is three sixteenths of an inch thick. What I did was I put it in a metal tube for the uh, steerable tail wheel and I put the uh, drywall packing tape around there. And what I did on this iteration the first foam bug, I had this tape on the outside of the fuselage for strength, and that worked fine. But what I did was I took the tape and I put it on the center section so you can't see it, then glued on the two outer foam sections just for appearance's sake. The firewall is in place. I have uh, two 1 16th inch ply. Before it was 1 16th. I think this will be adequate. I put some additional foam on the side, and you can see if you're careful, you can sand the foam a little bit. This is an initial attempt at the sanding. Just be careful you don't, don't go too far because you can dig into the fuselage. So, so far the fuselage has come along pr uh, pretty well. The engine is installed. I have the prop so we can see the distance clearance for the landing gear. That should be adequate. The motor has a little bit of down thrust, a little bit of right thrust. I'd put two washers on the top. Notice I put some side foam on the side just to cover the motor, just for decoration. I used the mounting tape to put on the uh, electronic speed control, and then I dug some channels in the bottom of the foam with some hot glue to keep the wires a little bit out of place. It's always a challenge with a profile fuselage where the wires go. Probably the big addition is the landing gear. What I did was to practice get the bend right, I take a very small type of music wire to see how it fits. It was all a continuous bend with the music wire going over the top of the fuselage then to the sides. Because this is foam, it's going to be easily damaged or broken. I put the, fiber, uh, the drywall reinforcing tape with hot glue on the bottom. I put the glue over that. Then I used popsicle sticks on either side to reinforce it with some more drywall tape and hot glue over the top. So we'll see if that holds up. Again, it's not super, super strong, but it's a fairly light model, so it should be okay. The landing gear, uh, rubber band uh, wing hold-down dowels are in place front and back, enough of a shoulder to mount the gear. The tail is installed, the fin, the stabilizer. And what I did just for a little extra reinforcing popsicle stick spar on the bottom of the stabilizer, then just the side to um, connect the stabilizer to the fuselage and just glue along here. So what will happen, oh, and then on the wing, here's the wing. I've surface mounted the two aileron servos with uh, mounting tape, and so that should be fine there. And just put a hole in the wing so the two connecting cords come out, and that will be how we'll connect it. <clears throat> So what will happen is I've got to mount the uh, receiver, which will be somewhere along here, servos for the rudder and elevator somewhere along here, and the battery along here. I want to check out the weight and balance with the battery in place to see where I have to put the servos before I put those in. The other thing is I haven't quite decided yet, but I'm going to try to fill this in a little bit with scrap foam just to cover this up with the foam just to see if it could look a little bit better. We'll, we'll experiment to see how that goes and, of course, covering it with uh, the transparent monocoat. So that's where we are so far with the foam bug. It's coming out nice. I'm satisfied the weight is about right and we'll look forward to um, success with the flight. So we're just uh, going to get ready to start covering the foam bug too. This is a fuselage so far. I think it's coming along pretty well. Uh, just decorative, the um, cockpit back is shown here using the foam board, Velcro straps for the battery. Notice the battery had to be placed well aft. The landing gear adds a surprising amount of forward weight. The original foam bug had the battery here. 
To balance it off, I put the wing in place, CG about here. The battery is at this location for the balance. The previously, you saw the landing gear against the, the um, inner three panels of the foam board. You can see the width from the top of the landing gear. I added side panels just to make it a little bit smoother, decorative. I decided to leave the electronic speed controller exposed. I think that's kind of actually a nice touch. This is a cutout to recess slightly the um, receiver, but you still have to have access to the, to the receiver to plug in various components. And then we'll go back for the control horns and um, that will pretty much complete the, the build of the fuselage, cover it, add the control surfaces, install the rest of the radio gear, and we'll, we'll be done with the airplane. The second version of the foam bug is complete. You can see the front view, top view, side view, and bottom view of the aileron servos. The weight came out at one pound, two ounces, very close to the first one, so that's good. The other thing I'd like to point out are the vinyl decals. Um, I did those yesterday, they came out very well. These are the white paper matte decals um, for the insignia on the wing. These are the transparent decals that worked fine on the lighter background, and I'll put a card up here for the uh, video that describes how to make these vinyl decals. So I think we're all set to go, and the weather cooperates. We'll take over a test flight tomorrow morning at the field. So it's uh, Monday, August 31st, 2020, out here at the field. It's a beautiful day. And we're going to try a test flight of the Foam Bug 2, the low wing version of the Foam Bug 1. So everything's in order. We got the battery in place. It balances out. And let's give it a shot. See how it goes. We just finished up with our first, uh, I guess we did three flights with the um, Foam Bug 2, the Rocketeer. And you can see in the videos, it flew great. It's a lightweight airplane. The lightweight is the key. I like flying slow and close in. I was getting a little bit too comfortable sometimes slowing down because it, it handles that well close in. But add a little bit of power, it perks right up. And um, it just, it flies well. I'm very happy with uh, this low wing adaptation of the Foam Bug 1. Good luck with your build. Ooh. 